and so there's a really going to be a gap in European launch access uh, to, to space for a while. It's official. The Ariane 5 rocket is retired after 27 years of work and a final launch July 5th. This, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top, allumage moteur Vulcan. It was bittersweet to see Europe's workhorse, the Ariane 5 rocket, have its final launch. And now the ESA has zero active launch systems. They're going to heavily be relying on SpaceX. And what's crazy is, as I was doing research for this video, I stumbled upon a clip from 10 years ago where the former CEO, Richard Bowles, for Ariane Space, said that SpaceX was just selling a dream and that the notion of reusable rockets was a dream that the cost for the spacex launches would be a dream so here we are 10 years later and boy have the tables turned so richard where do you see your company competing with a 15 million dollar launch am i connected yes. yes um so today um i mean spacex hasn't launched into the geostationary orbit yet but i mean they're, they're doing very well and their progress is going forward amazingly well um what I'm discovering in the market, though, is that uh, SpaceX primarily seems to be selling uh, a dream, which is good. We should all dream. I mean, I think the $5 million launch or $15 million is, is a bit of the dream. Uh, personally, I think reusability is a dream. Um, and I think recently I was at a session where I was told that there's no recovery plan because they're not going to have any failures. So I think that's the part of a dream. So at the moment, I feel that we're looking and you're presenting to me, how am I going to respond to a dream? And my answer to respond to a dream is, first of all, you don't wake people up. They have to wake up on their own. And then when the, once the market has woken up to the dream and the reality, then we'll compete with that. But they are looking at a price which is about half yours today. It's a dream. Well, <laughs> all right. Supposing that if you wake up and they're there, what would you Ariane Space do? Uh, we would have to react to it. I mean, if it, they're, you know, they're not supermen, so whatever they can do, we can do. We would, we would then have to follow. But today, at the moment, we don't That's see it as reality. Super women are yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, it really is a theoretical question at this moment in time. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't believe it's going to be theoretical for that much longer. They've done everything they've almost said they can do. I mean, that's true. So SpaceX's dream, in a way that it's grandiose and far-fetched, has now become Ariane Space's nightmare. Ariane's former CEO, Richard Bowles, accused SpaceX of selling a dream. This was at the CASBAA satellite conference in Singapore in 2013. So this interview 10 years ago may have had a lot of people convinced that Richard was right and that this is just something that wouldn't be possible. But here we are, SpaceX is changing the entire industry and showing why Ariane Space is so far behind from SpaceX. It was just last month that SpaceX landed a Falcon 9 booster for the 200th time. So yeah, reuse is just a dream, right? SpaceX's first Falcon 9 booster landing took place on December of 2015. And here we are in 2023 awaiting the second orbital test flight of Starship. And we are getting closer and closer every day to fully and rapidly reusable rockets. So I interviewed Jonathan McDowell about the Ariane 5 retirement and the delays that we're still having with Ariane 6. It's really, really been uh, a workhorse uh, for decades now. It's really a tragedy. Uh, the um, European space launch industry right now. So the Ariane 5 is retiring. The Ariane 6 has had a lot of delays and the Vega light launch rocket just had a test failure. It, it had a failure a while back and they were testing the fix and they lost the, that vehicle at uh, that stage. So it's going to be grounded for a while longer. And so there's a really going to be a gap in European 
launch access uh, to, to space for a while. I think we've talked about this before, that, that the fact that this gap in European capability comes at the same time as everyone's trying to get off the Russian launch vehicles for political reasons has been a real windfall for SpaceX. Uh, they've, they've really managed to snap up this market uh, of things that would have gone on Ariane, would have gone on Soyuz. And now the other thing that's happened is that there's been a further delay to the ULA Vulcan first launch. Yes. And so that makes it likely, as, as Eric Berger has noted, that, that uh, some of the DOD payloads that were going to go on Vulcan might end up on Vulcan 9 as well. So SpaceX, just by being, by plugging away and be, having the Vulcan 9 be consistently available at a high flight rate, uh, have, by the misfortunes of others, landed in a really good market position. So the Ariane 5, you know, is is a vehicle that, that first flew in 1996. So it's been going going for a while. Uh, and it was, a, you know, a big step up for Europe. The Ariane 1 through 4 were kind of a smaller uh, design. The Ariane 5 was a complete, despite the same name, right? It was, it was a complete new design. Uh, and um, it had a couple failures early on. But that gave it a little bit of an initial bad reputation. But actually, after the first sort of, you know, few launches, it's been incredibly reliable. Uh, so this last launch, had, the last but one launch, of course, was, was or, or last but a couple, was the James Webb telescope. So that was very high profile. And then it's finished off with a couple of launches of communication satellites. So there's a, a, a French military communication satellite called Syracuse. Uh, that's going on it. And then the second payload is a German experimental communication satellite called Heinrich Hertz. <laughs> and Heinrich Hertz sat was, uh, it's like 10 years behind schedule. It's been, it's another one of these projects that's gotten delayed and delayed all right. Uh, um, so, so these are, you know, it, it's, it's finishing off with a, a fairly standard launch, which is let's take two big communication satellites and put them in geotransfer orbit, this big elliptical orbit that goes from a couple hundred kilometers to 36,000 kilometers. Uh, and that's, you know, 10 years ago, that was the main commercial market was putting big communication satellites in geostationary orbit. And the Ariane 5 is really good for that market. Their launch site is near the equator and you want as near an equator orbit as possible uh, for, for launching geosats. Uh, and so it was really optimized for that market. The space launch market's really changed in the past years. And you know, with a lot more focus now on polar orbits of low orbit satellites. And you know, the geosats are still going up, but they're not the dominant part of the market anymore. Uh, and so Europe and, um, you know, the Ariane 6 that they're replacing Ariane 5 with mm -hmm. was a perf would have been a perfectly reasonable evolution design in 2005 or something like that, right? Wow. But in 2023, it's a generation behind the Falcon 9, I would say, yeah. and don't even talk about Starship. <laughs> and so because of bureaucratic and fighting and political coordination between the European countries and things like that. It just, they just haven't gotten their act together to be as nimble or as responsive and as innovative as SpaceX have been. And so I think everyone is expecting uh, Ariane 6 to get a few European government payloads, but not really to be any kind of competition for SpaceX. And what's with all the delays? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, underfunding partly, uh, but other than, and, and, uh, uh, unwillingness of the you know, disagreements between the various countries about how, you know, how to prioritize things, right. but keep you know, like making little inadequate changes to the design to respond, you know, to make it more interesting, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's just been badly managed is my impression. And I don't, 
I, I don't think it's the engineer's fault. I think it's the it's at the political level that it's been badly managed. Well, in this final Ariane 5 flight was supposed to be like mid-June, but it's been pushed to, is it still going to be like July 4th? I, I think it's early July in any case, yeah. Okay. And, but that's fine, you know, just, uh, slipping a few weeks for a launch is part of the game. That's That doesn't concern me at all. It's when you have to wait several years for the next one. <laughs> the, yeah, wow. So, uh, so what what are they going to rely on now with with, you know... Right. So so they're going to fly on Falcon 9 for the most part, I would right. guess. Which we know that OneWeb has, you know, SpaceX has already been launching OneWeb satellites, launching their competition, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, and for the European government, um, governments, the, the, I mean, the big launch that's coming up on Falcon 9 is Euclid, which is a European space telescope that's going up again in early July. Uh, and it's going to go to the Lagrange point and uh, map distant galaxies. And, and it's a very exciting mission. Uh, and it was meant to go on a Soyuz. And so after the Ukrainian invasion, they, yeah. they find another ride. And, you know, they talked about Ariane 6, but it just wasn't going to be ready. And so they ended up going with SpaceX. Well, and we talked about this at the beginning of the invasion, and here they're still just massive. Yeah, the, the 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 ramifications are rolling on. And here's a portion of Angry Astronauts' stream from the live rocket launch, the final Ariane 5 launch. Unité, top, oh, come on! There go the SRBs. Come on, baby. Go, 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 go. What a magnificent takeoff. Come on, come on, baby. Come on. Looking beautiful. Keep it going. Keep it going. Propulsion nominal. God, listen to that thing. Syracuse 4B and Heinrich Hertz satellite blazing a trail on board the last ever Ariane 5 across the equatorial skies and we can hear the rumble of her engines as she flies over. It's very impressive and we are, you know, 11 kilometers from the pad and the delay. So far looking very good. Wasn't that a spectacular takeoff? My God, that was just stunning. What a perfect time to launch. Uh, the atmospherics looking beautiful. I mean, boy, did that light up the sky and the uh, and the noise of those SRBs and those engines. Dear Lord Almighty, that was impressive indeed. So right now, of course, this mission is still far from over. Um, they are very good at what they do, and they've been doing this for a long time, but still, let's hope that everything's still going well. So this video is about Ariane Space, but it's also about SpaceX. SpaceX is the reliable option in the industry right now. And when I found that clip, I was just blown away. I, I'm sure that that guy is a little bit embarrassed that he said all of those things, but I just love how Elon Musk and SpaceX had this vision, had this dream. Of course, it wasn't perfect in the beginning. In fact, it almost completely failed. And here we are with SpaceX leading the industry, inspiring many new startups, and also launching 80% of Earth's payload into orbit. Let that sink in or reach escape velocity, one of the two. I also wanted to share a small message from LifeShip with you in this video because 
I will be sending Alien Space's DNA 250,000 miles away to the moon. And here's a little bit why. Hey guys, Ellie in Space here and check out this kit from LifeShip. This is so that I can send my DNA to the moon. So I figured that we would do the unboxing together. I have not read the instructions. And as we know, it's important to just read the instructions. So you get this kit and my journey awaits. Congratulations, you're going to space. Out of the billions of humans who have walked this earth, your unique DNA will be among the first preserved on another world, part of life's expansion into the cosmos. So basically I can use this kit and register my DNA sample. So what is in the lunar capsule that LifeShip is sending to the moon? They're sending a genetic record of humankind with our unique DNA included, a biobank conserving the DNA of Earth's diverse species, and a comprehensive library of human knowledge and culture. So I even have a ticket to the future, and this is my boarding pass. I'm a cosmic explorer on this lunar mission. Well, that is as soon as I give them my DNA sample, which we haven't got to that part yet. And I have a pre-flight checklist. I have to record my unique serial number included with the DNA swab, register this by scanning the QR code or going to lifeship.com slash go, collecting my DNA sample by following the instructions on the swab and returning the swab with my sample using the envelope provided. I must register to go on this mission. And this is cool, I even get a patch and a sticker. So here is that cosmic envelope that I will be sending my sample in with. And it even has a quote from Carl Sagan, we began as wanderers and we are wanderers still. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. Okay, instructions before use, do not eat, drink or brush teeth for one hour before use. Haven't done that. The swab dries rapidly to preserve the sample. So I have to rub the swab on the inside of my cheeks for one minute. So to make sure that I'm doing this all properly, I am going to register this first. Okay, so it says, congratulations, Eliana, you are registered. So now I just gotta collect the sample. So uh, here goes nothing, I guess. putting it on the drying area. It's supposed to dry rapidly to preserve my sample of my DNA. In goes the swab. That was easy. Fold line and my sticker to seal her up. Cause we're saying bye bye. Oh, and they even have a 1969 first moon landing forever stamp already. I love it. Okay, let me just write my return address. Okay, 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 let's put her in and let's put that in there, huh? And perfect. Yes, I registered my serial number. There's a reminder for you. That's that. That is going off to LifeShip in Carlsbad, California, and eventually to the moon. So I'm gonna get this sent off right away because I want to be included in the next Firefly mission, which means that my deadline is to return the kit by August 1st. And off to the moon we go. But LifeShip obviously is going to have many more missions, so you can get your own kit using my code Ellie in space. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it that thumbs up, subscribe to Ellie in space. If you haven't already, I also wanted to let you know, I haven't really told you on my YouTube channel yet. Um, I have told some people on my Twitter, but I have been using Twitch. It wants me to create a new boundary because I usually play out there, confirm. So first it has you confirm where the floor is. And now I'm gonna draw a boundary as another platform just to talk more casually, uh, maybe some things that are not about space, more about my life. So if you're interested in following me on Twitch and hanging out, I will leave that link in the description. Um, I am Ellie in Space on Twitch, but anyway, I thought that I would throw that out there because we have over 70,000 of you guys on the Ellie in Space channel. So I'm feeling very grateful for my channel and all of the support that I have. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll also be making a trip to Starbase this month. Also, we'll be making a trip to California to interview Relativity Space. 
So I have a lot of exciting content on the way. I will be making these trips in my Model 3 that I recently had wrapped, uh, and I will be releasing that video soon. So with that being said, I should probably get back to editing, but thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.